What's up guys and gals, welcome back to the Nerd Castle for the next episode of Weekly Indie Newcomer. My name is Splattercat, today we are taking a look at Centauri Sector. It's kind of a top-down Newtonian physics-based shooter. If you played Spaz, it's kind of like that, except that it also has like real-time strategy, and on top of that it's got like tower defense mechanics. It's a very, very busy game that has a lot of weird stuff going on, and so I figured I would cover it since I put a bunch of hours into it over the course of the last couple days. So without further ado, if you wanted to check out Centauri Sector, it was made by one guy. It's a one-man project. I think he used to work for various games companies over the year but he broke out all by himself and this is his first title that he's released to Steam. If you wanted to purchase it after watching this video I'll have all the relevant information down below. It's $9.99 but without further ado let's play the game a little bit shall we? Now normally I start out these weekly indie newcomer videos by starting a new game and just playing like the first 30 minutes of the game. I'm not gonna do that in this situation because I feel like the game takes a long time to ramp up. It takes at least an hour or so of playing before the game starts to get interesting. And so there's a very real probability that if I go to new game, you won't actually see certain facets of the gameplay. And so I'm just going to hope that in my current save, they come up and we can work our way through things. So let's ride. Okay, so we're back inside the game for right now, and this is going to be the main map menu that you play the game through. Wow, that was actually pretty alliterative. I wasn't planning on that to come out that way, but you know what? It did, and we done done it already, so meh, why worry about it? But anyways, this is the main map screen that you're going to be playing the game through. It's got all the planets that you're supposed to be protecting. So in the storyline, you're the member of like some kind of, I don't know, space-bearing race that has sent out colonies to a new cluster of planets, and you are one of the vanguards. So these right here are colony ships that fly around. These are pirates. These are my ships with my escorts right here so there's my main flagship and my two little escorts and these down here are other patrols that can assist us in our fights and so the ultimate goal of the game is to keep the system morale up so right now you'll see that our morale is 81 we have 1800 prestige prestige is essentially how you leverage new gear for yourself it's your currency so as you win fights because you're in the military they don't pay you for winning fights they actually give you this thing called prestige and then you can use that on planets to buy yourself new gear and so on this map the game is turn based I can move my ship anywhere inside of this little sphere that I want to if I end my turn on top of a planet or if I'm on top of a planet when I start a turn I can go into the inventory menu and I can barter and I can trade on the planet we also have a skills menu down here which I'm fully leveled right now I'm a commander but as you play the game there used to be a little bar there it is right there so there's a bar right here that fills up as you play the game and you get to unlock these little simple talent trees right here where they've got different branching skills you can give yourselves and so in the first tree right there you have like 20% damage for 30 seconds you've got extra stuff where it dissipates half of your capacitor in five seconds you've got that one right there which actually gives your entire fleet more armor I think well, it says 10% damage and 10% something for 30 seconds. But anyways, that's a typo right there. But either way, I took this one because it was a buff for my entire fleet, including all the guys that jump into the battle from on the side. And so obviously there's a lot of things here that you can check out. There's a couple different options that you can play with. You only get to choose one. So once you go down further, you're going to have to do like more playthroughs before you'll be able to do anything else with it. But let's go ahead and I'm going to try and stop these pirates up here. So let's move to right there and see if we can head them off. And it looks like they actually ducked down behind us, and then these pirates came out of nowhere, and they're attacking a colony ship. I don't know if I'm going to be able to stop this from happening, because we're far enough into the game now to where the enemy's gear is good enough to where they, like, one-shot the colony ships. But I'm going to give it a try. Into combat we go. So inside of combat, the controls are basically WASD as you expect them to be. We've got to defend this little green arrow over here. If I wanted to, I can press the tab key, which will allow me to take my escorts, and I can actually assign them to go and attack other things. And I am going to do that. I'm going to have them kill that guy right there. These are our fighter ships right here in the front. These are frigates on the side. And this right here is actually a capital ship. And so obviously we need to rush towards there with a capital motivation. Otherwise, he is going to capitalize on the fact that our ship is undefended. We also, down in the bottom right-hand corner, we can move around our engines, our weapon, and our shield energy. So if you wanted your energy to recharge faster for your shields, you can do that. If you want your weapons to do more damage, you can do that. And in fact, that's what I'm going to do first. Let's go and see if we can get into a gunfight here. I'm going to try and help my escorts real fast. Because it looks like we're actually taking a considerable amount of damage. Let me wait for my turrets to rotate. We'll come around this way and we'll take some shots over here. Everything is real time when you're in this battle. So I'm clicking to fire each time. I can also press the Q and the E keys to use my active skills and make our lives a little bit easier. The health of our ward is right there. So his shields and his health are in that position. If he goes down to zero, we don't get any prestige and we don't get any XP. It just sort of sucks for us. We have defended the colony ship pretty well. I do like the sprites that they use in the game. I think that they're fairly well designed. They look tight. They look like they're in HD, and so I got nothing to complain about right there. Let's go down and see if we can handle this big ship right here. I'm going to assign you two to go attack him first. You can be my little outrunners, or I guess my tacklers first and foremost. 
Although I don't know if that's the right terminology either. A tackler is somebody that stops somebody from warping out of the zone by jamming their warp engine. So I'm going to use my big laser cannons for right now. You'll see there's an extra laser coming out. That's fired with the space bar. Oh, we lost one of our escorts. That sucks. That's a little bit brutal, but I can handle it. We made enough money to where we can replace him anyways. Actually, maybe not. Let's go ahead and jump out of this battle. But that's pretty much it. That's going to be the main thing that you spend most of your time doing in this game. You're going to be flying around, fighting these random skirmishes with pirates and ending the day. And that's going to be that. It looks like they're about to blow up this colony ship over here. On the way back, I'm going to stop on Sahara. And since we lost one of our escorts... I'm going to hire a new one. So there is some limited customization you can do to your ship. If we take a look over here on the right-hand side, this is all the weapons in the game right here. So if you want to save up and the first thing you want to buy is the best turret in the game, go ahead and buy the best turret in the game as your first purchase. You can totally do that. In fact, it only costs you 3500 prestige. Not that expensive. There are some modules, and these allow you to customize your ship in a couple of different ways. Essentially, they allow you to add base percentages to various stats that your ship has. So if you feel like your ship is too slow, you can boost their speed. If you feel like you don't do enough damage, you can boost that very very small options right here I'd like to see a lot more in this menu but at the same time at least they give you a menu to begin with because a lot of games would just play this through as an action game and so obviously you can drag and drop these into your module slots right now I have like a 5% damage and speed mod equipped I have an overdrive mod and two overdrive mods so that's gonna be 5% to all stats on each of those overdrives and those are probably one of the more expensive modules I saved up for quite a while to get them I've got a dual disruptor turret which is okay it's pretty decent. I've got a Disruptor Cannon, which is fired with my spacebar in combat instead of by clicking like the other stuff. And then these are the ships that are available inside of the game. Obviously, there's not a lot of selection going on. I think there could probably be a couple more ships in the game, each with varying stats. As of right now, though, there are not. The game, this is like the final release of the game, I think. I don't know if the developer is going to continue adding new stuff to the game, but I would recommend it, honestly. I feel like the customization aspect of the game is a little bit limited right now. I can only slot a Corvette or a scepter into this spot right here. I think I'm gonna go with another Corvette, so let me buy him real fast and we'll put him in our escort slot. I don't think I have any extra weapons around or anything like that. Technically, I could get myself a new ship. The Destroyer is our flagship. It's the biggest one in the game. However, I do like the Frigate as well. If you wanted to go a little bit faster and deal a little bit less damage, you could go with the Frigate. But honestly, this thing is just a bear. It can soak so much damage and it can dish out so much pain towards your enemies that honestly, if you can catch your enemy, they aren't going to win the fight. That's basically what it comes down to. Like, if they allow you to get within firing range, they're done like dinner. There's a whole bunch of pirates on this side of the map. And it looks like they're probably going to be able to blow... I don't know what happened right there. Who is he fighting with? Because that colony ship just flew away. Oh, they blew up the pirates. Okay, well, good for them. Apparently, pirates are explosive. They're made out of match heads and kerosene. Let's go ahead and end our day right here. We've got another skirmish on this side that actually looks like it's going to turn into a big-ass battle. So let's jump up in here and see if we can help. This is going to be with another escort fleet. Oh, never mind. We're in a battle that's on the edge of the escort fleet. Okay. So never mind. Let me. I'm going to adjust everything to weapons, and I'm going to do the best that I can to wipe out everything that comes at me here as fast as possible. I would put things into shields if my ship was a little bit weaker, but since we're such a good damage soak, I don't tend to worry about it very much. So I'm just going to float for a little bit and maintain a backwards heading. We're going to turn around and start accelerating forwards, and then we're going to take on this big old ship over here. Let me pull out, press the Q and E keys to pull out both of my active abilities. I think I'm a little bit off with the cannon, but we should be able to drop him pretty quickly. And come on, fall over. Down he goes. That red bar in the middle right there is your capacitor heat. It gets hotter and hotter and hotter as you fire your weapon, so you want to make sure that you're not using it all up at the outset of the battle. It does not dissipate very well, so watch out for that as well. You can get modules that actually, modules and abilities that help that dissipate faster. I don't tend to worry about it because you really only max out your fire in really, 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 I'm sorry, you only max out your heat in really long battles, and those don't come along very often. On the next turn, we're going to try and help out right here because you do get a zeroth turn. So we'll go ahead and give that a go. And there it is. And he'll actually be added into our combat right now. You'll see them spawn in. And so there it is. This is one of the bigger fleet battles that you can get into. I don't think I've ever seen more than three units stack in before, but I assume that it might be a possibility. Yeah, you guys are getting whooped on. You should have thought about this a little bit harder before you came up inside my territory. For freedom! Okay, that's my battle cry. It's not very threatening, but at the same time, people do kind of look at you crossways whenever you do it. God, you are getting whooped on, man. You should have thought about it before. What is that red beam that somebody's firing? That thing seems... Oh, there's a second fleet. Okay, so we're going to have more problems. Let me go ahead and I'm going to buff my fleet real fast because we're about to get hit from the side. We might get flanked out slightly. I think they should be able to handle the flagship over there without too many problems. I'm going to jump into this combat right here. 
Let's see if maybe I can flatten some of these guys. It looks like the frigates are going to come up behind me. Rotate my turrets real fast and see if I can... Yeah, there we go. Apply a little bit of pulse fire onto him. He's now down. I don't know if they got the flagship yet. It looks like they have him cornered up on the edge of the map. But it does appear as though we are winning. I'd be surprised if we weren't because, honestly, our armaments are pretty badass right now. I hope I don't lose any of my units. Yeah, it looks like they got the flagship already. Now, a couple of things I noticed about this game, just like little things, like the Newtonian physics, for example. So, in Newtonian physics, you should maintain your inertia. So, you see the direction that we're flying right now? We should maintain that regardless of our facing, and we should have to fight against that inertia in order to accelerate in the opposite direction. So, because, let's say we'll call this knots. If we're moving 75 knots in the northeast direction, we then have to apply the same amount of power. If we apply 75 knots to the southwest, we have to wait until it cancels out our inertia before we actually accelerate in that direction. But watch what happens. You actually, you instantly accelerate in this game. And so that's one of those little things that I noticed within seconds of playing the game is that you actually accelerate instantly out of your inertia no matter, like, basing on your face. No, no matter what, so I can, I can word this better. Regardless of your facing or the inertia that you're floating with, you instantly accelerate out of it, as you can see right there. So it should take us a second to fight out of this directionality when we rehead like this. But instead, the second that I press the W key, we instantly retraject in the other direction. And so some people are going to hate that right there. It's one of the little things that I noticed. Wow, we got so much money and so much XP for that. That's wild. I don't know what happens when our bar fills up further. I don't know if we prestige or, like, what happens. I don't think I ever let the bar fill up. This is pretty much the farthest into the game I've ever played. This is about two hours into the game, I guess. We're pretty far in. We're on, like, our 110th turn. So, Commander, one of our planet's outposts is under attack. Locate the green event. Okay, so this is going to be the... It might be real-time strategy or it might be tower defense. I'm not exactly sure just yet. we got to wait and see until we get there. It's kind of a combination of the two, so we might get both. We got pirates on our grid over there. These missions are actually pretty challenging, so I'm not sure the way that it's going to go for right now. We'll jump into Atlantis, though, and we just barely made it over here before our time allotment was up. Let's go. And for right now, it looks like we have a new ability. Welcome to Victoria Outpost, Commander. A large enemy force is heading this way, and you need to prepare the defenses. High Command has given you access to the Heavy Laser Turret, which has a long range and medium damage, and an EMP field generator to stun your enemies for a short duration of time. Remember to repair the base when needed. Good luck. Okay, so when we click next right there, the game is actually going to start. So what you want to do, this is, I don't know if this is a bug or how it's intended, but when you press next, it starts the mission, but you can actually start playing the mission before that even happens. Like, you can start fiddling around with stuff right here and, like, building stuff before it even commences. So just be aware that that's an option that's open and available to you. I think what I'll probably go with for right now is let's build a couple of like the moderate turrets. So there's light, medium, and heavy turrets. They all do exactly what they sound like. The bigger it is, the more it costs, and the more damage it does, and the more range that it has. I prefer the medium turrets. You can also lay down mines. You can put down new paddocks, which you can defend your base from. This is the EMP blast that he was talking about. This right here is a missile launch. You can actually call in an airstrike to wipe out your enemies. And then the other thing that you can do is over here on the right-hand corner, you can pay money to have a gun added to the top of your base. And then these right here are actually little outriders. So you can hire these little, I don't know, I would call them like Humvees or something. They spawn out of your base and you can have, it looks like we can have three of them in this mission. And they can run out. And if you look at these little green dots, there's storage crates all over the place. That's how you get bonus resources. Stuff like that. I'll probably spawn in one or two of them before we start the mission. I'll run out and grab these. I know I'm being a cheesy McCheeserson right now. But you know what? These are actually really, really difficult if you play them the way that they're supposed to, and so I'm going to cheese my way through it for a second. You should see him move around, I think, right? Oh, no, never mind. He's paused, so apparently we can do our building first, but we can't run out and grab gear first. I'll probably put a turret, I don't know, like right here seems like an okay plan. How much money do I have? I have 600 money down here. We can make nine turrets, and we can make four, okay. So we can make nine turrets, and we can make four of our little Humvee cannon tank things. I'll probably drop that right there. You click on this and it actually upgrades you so that you start generating cash just by continuing to exist. I don't know where the enemy's gonna come from. And so, not knowing that, I think I might just chill for a second and wait it out and we'll see how this goes. I would probably spend the rest of my cash just spawning more tanks. And so that's what I'm gonna do real fast. Let's start it off. Okay, so we got a couple coming in from that way. I'm going to have you two move over to here. It looks like he's, like, stuck or something. I don't know what's going on with him. It appears as though he's stuck. That is totally lame. And so what we want to do for right now, since he got stuck, we need to sit here, and I'm actually just going to focus on repairing this thing. 
for a minute. Oh, we don't actually don't have enough cash. So as you can see, the game gets very, very difficult very, very early on. And in fact, we're probably about to lose our base. There's no way to actually know how to do this until you've played the mission. And they do attack from random directions each time that they play. So I don't know. Our turret is stuck right there and he's not able to get out. As you can see, the game is very, very buggy, and there are a lot of random issues that this game has. So we're going to lose this one based on a technicality because, A, I didn't know where the attack was coming from beforehand. And so, had I known, I would have reinforced this side instead of putting it all around. But as you can see, the tower-based defense levels are very, very difficult and subject to bugs. So anyways, we lost that one. It's not a huge deal. We lost 40 morale from it. Since our units got stuck, I'm not sure what to say right there. Eh, we kind of just have to bear with it. I'll bring up, that's actually kind of the tip of the iceberg with regards to the bugs that I've had with this game. And so I'll bring those up during our pros and cons session. But I will say this, as we're at the position right now, the tower defense and the real-time strategy portions are really, really buggy. That's by no means the first time I've had units get stuck after spawning. And it's also not the first time that I've lost based on the fact that the game doesn't give you any clear indicator what direction you're going to get attacked from. Like most tower defense games, they show you the path that the enemies are going to walk before you play the level so that you can eyeball it and sort of figure out how it's going to go. In this game, it gives you no indication whatsoever as to which side you're going to get attacked from and what you need to handle. It looks like they killed off the pirates right there. And so anyways, back to my original point. Because of that... A lot of the time, I actually I save before I take those, and then I just save scum them because there's no way to know. You basically have to. And even then, even save scumming them, it's a little bit weird because it spawns them. It's random, the areas that they attack from. So even so, I typically will like close the game and replay those when I lose just because each one's got a little bit of a learning curve to it. But still, you saw right there, it was pretty nasty. And given the supplies that they gave us to start out with, we didn't have a whole lot of a chance of winning that one without some kind of like metagame knowledge beforehand. I'm going to start wiping out. Oh my god, we got a lot of fire coming this way. Okay. Do I have anybody on my team right now? I have like nobody. So let's back up slightly. I'm going to try and get rid of these fighters. There goes one right there. There goes one right there. And so it's kind of interesting because like the action portion of the game where you're playing the shooter is very, very... Oh, we're out of our front shields right there. Let me rotate a little bit so they're not damaging my front. And then we'll go after you right there. You're now down. Rotate the guns back to that side. Float for a little bit. And so there's this weird juxtaposition in between like the action portions being very, very easy. And then the tower-based portions being incredibly difficult to the point where you kind of have to have some metagame knowledge before you'll be able to beat them. Just one of those weird little transitions that I've seen so far. And on top of that, there's nothing you can really update. Like, for example, in the shooter portion, if you're having trouble and you're getting outshot or you're having like a lot of trouble outmaneuvering your enemy or anything like that, you can buy upgrades, which will make it a little bit easier. The tower defense portion, there's really not a whole lot you can do there aside from deploy your turrets differently and just kind of hope for the best before anything else goes wrong. So ideally what I would have done right there if I had wanted to win it is I probably should have saved some money for an airstrike. That's how you get rid of the tanks. We have a large pirate fleet that's on the way to attack a planet. Okay, so this is going to be one of the planetary defense missions, which means we're going to be fighting in orbit around the planet. It's kind of a cool little concept. There's essentially like a space station above every planet that if it gets destroyed, then they attack the planet. We do like a tower defense thing afterwards. So there is some cause and effect in this game. Still, I'm going to jump in on this one real fast and see if I can assist with it. Where are we going? Okay, so our station is towards the middle right there. we got to sprint over as fast as we can and try and take care of business. I'm going to press the 2 key and divert all of our power over to engines. And so you'll see at the bottom that allows us to go up by about 25% speed. We do 105 knots or whatever our speed is right now. Solar units or, I don't know, astronomical units. I'm not sure what they're using right now. It looks like there's a pretty big battle over here, but we do have a flagship, so we should be all right. I'm going to re-divert all power to weapons now that we're inside of the range of the space station. And let's see how we can assist with this defense. It looks like I'm going to go after the flagship over here. Let's see if I can put a couple rounds on him. And down he goes. He's been taken care of. I'm going to go upwards now. And I think there's another flagship over here. You can see how much slower we're going now that I actually re-diverted power. It becomes a little bit of a hassle. I think this guy might just be backing up. Let's put a little bit of power into engines so that maybe we can catch. I think he's throwing his shit into reverse. And he's just like, nope, 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 nope. And he's getting the hell out of Dodge. Okay, so there he is right there. I don't even know what he's firing at. It looks like he wasn't aggroed properly. Or maybe he was just like sitting over here. Go ahead and I'm going to try and keep rounds on him. Go ahead and buff my fleet real fast by hitting the Q and the E keys. We'll do as much damage as we can to you. My weapons are actually not dealing that much damage right now because I re-diverted power. So let me fix that very, very quickly. We can get rid of that flagship. He's now down, so that's going to be one of them. Oh, there's even more of them. Okay. So I probably want to let my guns cool down for a minute before they arrive. Go ahead and I'll wipe you out real quick. 
come back and around this way. It looks like they wiped out most of our escort fleet. Wow, this is a pretty big grouping. Okay. Let me put some on you. You're now down. The station looks like it's in decent shape. Let's help out with these flagships, though, because they can deal a lot of damage if you leave them unbabysat. All right, so I don't know why that opened. Close off. There. Oh, I hit the button. That's why. Okay. Let's go ahead and take care of you. And now that you've been dealt with, fall down. There we go. Put a couple rounds on these fighters. I tend to be just like a hellion for these fighters. I wipe them out without any threat to myself. We may actually lose this one based on my engine heat, which is far too high right now. I think if I put all power into that right there, we should dissipate a little bit faster. Another round right there. It looks like we're pretty much maxed out right now, though. If I can get your shields down, that'd make me pretty happy. Yeah, it looks like we're just about out of our capacitor. So unfortunately, we gotta wait. I'm gonna drag them back in. It looks like our hull is actively being damaged right now. I'm gonna drag them back within range of the... Yikes. Okay, so let's put power into shields for a second. I'm going to drag them back into range of the space station so that maybe they can pull mobs off of me. By dealing a little bit of damage right there, we might be able to finish him off before the hull breach. Nope, hull breach. We actually lost that one. So unfortunately, luckily, I have a whole bunch of prestige left. But unfortunately, you don't get a lot of help in these fights. And so if you zone in by yourself, there's no guarantee. So the way that I'll put it is there's no guarantee the AI will jump into this fight so that you can have allies on your side. Conversely, you have to jump into the fight alone because you can't rely on that happening. So, for example, I've seen... Let's go back to the map real fast. Press the enter key real quick. And so, anyways, we got wiped out right there. And so, what we need to do now is they're going to respawn us on this side. So, my point here is that you can't guarantee that these little patrol guys are going to add into the fight. But there's no way with any equipment setting that you can win that fight by yourself with just you in the station. And so you're left in this weird gambling limbo where you have to wait and see if the AI actually does something intelligent. Or if you're going to have to fight the battle all by yourself and more than likely lose because the capacitor heats up too quickly and there's just like nothing you could do about it. So anyways, there are abilities that can dissipate your capacitor. But we're going to have to restock real fast. Let me grab... Oh, my modules got destroyed. And we only have laser turrets now too. Ooh, that's so bad. We've been reset pretty horribly actually. Let's get two Corvettes to add in as our escorts. There it is. And so from the escort service, we get ourselves a few more Corvettes. And I probably need to re-equip myself with a better gun for right now. And I think I can do that for a round... Well, I don't know. We got a dual fusion turret right there. What's the difference between these? I don't know which one I want. But anyways, it seems like a good point to do our little, I guess, pros and cons section. So let's go ahead and do that. I was a little bit lukewarm about Centauri Sector by the end of my playtime, and like the best way that I know how to describe it is by invoking the old RPG trope of the Jack of All Trades. What really hurts Centauri Sector the most is that it incorporates a lot of ideas instead of just taking one and refining that, and anybody that's ever made a character in a tabletop game or RPG will know that distributing your points equally across a bunch of skills means that you'll have a character that does everything average but never quite excels at anything specific. In my mind, that's precisely what happened with Centauri Sector. It manages to be a very average shooter, an average tower defense game, and an average real-time strategy game all mashed together. Customization is limited, and that's very unfortunate because I am a gearhead and I love customizing things, and so it's limited as to what you can accomplish with your flagship, and alongside that, you can't customize your escort ships at all. Gearheads like myself will lament this fact, and I really hope that future updates will expand further upon the equipment and give you some more options. There were bugs along the way, and some of those were game-breaking for me. I don't know if other people will hit them, but in my playthrough, I had a particular bug that caused my camera to be stuck slightly off of the map screen, and the only way that I could get it to be reset was by restarting my campaign. It was actually, like, saved into the game. The graphics are competent. I liked the HUD. It stayed minimally invasive, and it still conveyed the rough amount of information that you need in order to play the game properly. There is no narrative aside from, like, the opening cinematic, and so if you're looking for, like, a very thick storyline. You're probably not going to find it with Centauri Sector. The sound effects are about what you'd expect. The lasers pew, the machine guns pop, and dead starships explode in a gratifying way. And I think that replay value with this title is going to be limited by the small amount of ships, the small amount of gear, and by how much you ultimately enjoy the game on your first playthrough. The average campaign playthrough is going to end in about 120 game turns, which will take you like an hour to two hours, and that's presuming that you don't lose. If you're looking for a game which attempts to merge a ton of genres together into an average stew of ideas, Centauri Sector will be just that. And honestly, I could see this game actually doing well as a mobile app. But with respect to PC gaming, the unfortunate fact is that you can get a super solid RTS, action shooter, or tower defense offering for much less than $10. 
which is the current pricing of Centauri Sector, and that's due to the grace and generosity of our Lord and Savior Gaben. So, unless you're looking for a game that tries to merge a whole bunch of genres together, Centauri Sector probably won't be a game that most people will give a chance. My name is Splattercat, thank you for joining me here for Weekly Indie Newcomer. Today's game is called Centauri Sector. If after that you wanted to check the game out, I've got all the information down below. It's $9.99 on Steam right now. I look forward to seeing you in future episodes. Take care out there, everybody, and I do.